And where I encourage my clients to start is from within. <laughs> Welcome to the Soul Sourced Podcast, unconventional business advice for the highly creative, secretly sensitive, and wildly ambitious entrepreneur. I'm your host, Christine Kane. Let's do this. Okay, I think we have a minor miracle here at the Soul Sourced Business Podcast. It is quiet on the set. <laughs> the cats have stopped playing and I am ready to welcome you to episode number 52. And this is kind of an epic episode in that we here at the Soul Sourced Business Podcast are celebrating one full year of putting this podcast out. And I am taking this time to pause and to celebrate with you. This episode is called The Awesomeness Habit. And so it kind of links up, the topic of today kind of links up into something that quite frankly, I forget to do and my clients forget to do and all of us as entrepreneurs forget to do. And that is to make a habit out of celebrating and acknowledging who we are, what our accomplishments are, any milestone that we create. And I'm going to speak to this a little bit, but first I want to say that in celebration of our awesomeness here and accomplishing a big thing, <laughs> getting a full year of podcasts done, I'm going to be opening up a really cool gift for the month of August, a little a chance to start getting into your own awesomeness habit with me as we get going. It'll be free and it'll be a cool way to welcome in that September kind of flood of productivity that we all seem to expect out of ourselves. And I'm going to kind of lay the foundation in August to help you make that happen. And that's in honor of the year of doing podcasts here at Soul Sourced. And also in honor of that, I want to thank you guys for listening because I can't express enough what a delight it is to know you're out there, to hear from you, to get emails from you, to get Facebook posts and messages asking questions and sharing insights and all that good stuff. So it's truly an honor for me. And clearly Finnegan did not hear the quiet on the set <laughs> expression here. And nor is he paying attention to the big red light that says recording. So he has decided to celebrate with us. And we're just going to let him because that's how we roll here at Soul Sourced and at Up Level. So the topic today, it's weird. I struggled with the title of this one. As entrepreneurs, most of us leave ourselves depleted. We do not feed ourselves. We do not feed our souls. And the, the path of having a business is a lot about the full complete picture. A lot of us think it's about that one fix, that one thing that's wrong with us, that one strategy that we're going to get that makes it all better. And the way I try to teach my clients is that this is a holistic kind of a path and process. And there are many things that feed into the success of any business and any business owner. And to that end, as I begin today's podcast topic, I want to share two things with you that, and maybe three, I don't know, it could be two, it could be three. But just to get us rolling here, one is a comment that someone posted in our Up Level Cafe community. So I do a thing with all of my clients and all of my programs. Whenever we have a, a meetup, whenever we start a week, I, you know, we do the Sunday Summit, we, we celebrate, we kind of take a 360 uh, about how we're doing. And so if we're doing a mastermind retreat, it always starts out with some kind of what I call the confidence up leveler, an awesomeness inventory, whatever it is, you have to acknowledge what you've done. And that happens at our quarterly retreats. Also, I think every week you can do that as well. We do that in Up Level Cafe. We acknowledge what we accomplished last week. And to that end, Nina posted a comment and she said uh, on, our, on our little Friday celebration, this morning, as I sat down to write this post, I thought to myself, I haven't done X, Y, or Z. But then as I look over my week, I find that I've done a lot, including sending off a proposal. And she went on to talk about it more. But that 
I loved that sentiment because that expresses what a lot of us go through is we never feel like we've done quite enough. So that's the first thing I want to share that kind of propelled me to talk about this today. And then the second thing is I'm in a little mastermind with two other people. And these two people, we, we meet regularly. And these two people are both, both New York Times number one bestselling authors. They both have a, a, an enormous impact on their clients, on their peeps. They do an enormous amount of work. And one of the things when we talked about setting up this mastermind, I said, I think we should begin every single meeting celebrating our accomplishments, doing some kind of awesomeness habit, as I call it. And it was interesting because the first thing they said was, well, I don't know if I could come up with anything that I've done. <laughs> and then the other thing I've noticed is that as we've met over the years, or over the year, I have had to kind of always start by saying, let's do our celebrations first. And the reason this is so significant is that even though these are people who have succeeded, both an enormous amount, and both of who are wildly famous in their own worlds and in their own rights, they still have that hard time. It's sort of like what Nina said. They never think they do enough. None of us ever think we do enough. And all of this is to say that most of us keep the bar just above our, like, like above our nose. The bar, the, the bar is just above our nose or our head. And we always keep raising it just a little bit. Like, yeah, I did that one thing, but I didn't quite do it right. Or, oh, but I still have other stuff I haven't done. Or, oh, I'm not as good as that person there. And we have this disease of just never quite being enough. And it's not you. It's just the ego. It's the nature of this energy that we call the ego, that we call the, the mind even. And there's always reasons why you, you haven't quite done enough. You aren't quite there yet. And this is why I want to speak to you about this thing I call the awesomeness habit, because I add it in to every single thing I do with clients. And I'm kind of um, militant about showing people the things that they've done, because the truth is most of us accomplish quite a bit. And that's what we're going to talk about today is celebrating your accomplishments because there is no way to create momentum and success until you can do that. So with that said, I'm going to give you three insights to consider because I can, I can share practices and I will share some practices and, and some examples, but it's really key that you understand this. And why it was hard to name this episode and to title this episode is because I know that for some of you, there's this little bit of like, yeah, 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 and eye rolls and all that kind of stuff that goes along with when somebody says, dude, you really need to start celebrating the things you accomplish. And I want to share three insights about that so that maybe you can create your own awesomeness habit. I'm going to give you a chance to get started with it in August. I'm going to open up a thing we're doing. <laughs> tell you about that at the end. But the three things you need to understand are as follows. The first thing is something I call dopamine snacks. And that is that your brain needs dopamine snacks. And you know this because if you create any kind of task lists, if you ever cross anything off, that's a hit of dopamine. But most of us don't even give ourselves a chance to celebrate anything. And why a practice like the Sunday Summit, like why I incorporated the Sunday Summit into the Up Level Cafe membership is because it is so important. I have had clients, you know, I, I've been working with clients now for 12 years, even longer, actually, because I was working with clients even when I was doing music. But I've been working with clients, coaching clients, and while everyone comes into the programs thinking it's all about, show me the money, give me the cool training, give me the quick fix. The habit of starting to feed dopamine to the brain is part of what makes their success begin to skyrocket. Even though they have to get over that little cynicism, that little thing that says, Ugh, I haven't done anything, just give me my next step. Tell me what's wrong with me, fix what's broken. I have to just sort of almost like fake them 
into practicing celebrating what they have accomplished. So to that end, as an entrepreneur, as a creative, and especially as a sensitive entrepreneur or secretly sensitive, as I call it in my book, you need to start setting up habits and systems for feeding yourself these things I call dopamine snacks. And what that means is that whether it's every quarter or every month or every week or even every day, it's not just about having a gratitude practice, like a lot of us have gratitude journals, and that's wonderful. But you also need to pause and acknowledge everything you have done. So a lot of times people say to me, I have a fear of being seen, or I never feel like I am seen, or I never feel like people understand how much I do. That energy starts within yourself. Because when we have a deficiency of acknowledgement of being seen, we are often looking to outside of ourselves, to the external, to do that work for us and somehow fill the God hole that never seems to get filled, the void that is in there. And where I encourage my clients to start is from within. And what that means is that instead of always having the bar just above your head, you have to have the discipline, and I know I can't stand that word because it's so harsh for some people, but if you look at the core of discipline, it really is that word disciple and where it, that's when it starts to really make a difference where you sit down, whether that's every Friday, every Sunday doing your Sunday summit, or even just monthly or quarterly, you have to start acknowledging what you've done. And if it never quite feels like enough, I will give you a little secret. One of the things that I do at our quarterly retreats is we have one column where on our, on our tool, it's called the confidence up leveler. One column is everything you've accomplished. Big, small, personal business, doesn't matter. And on the second column next to it is a column that says reason this is so great. Meaning, what is my accomplishment might not be your accomplishment. And what I got over to achieve something like, so for instance, if I'm celebrating a year of doing a podcast, when I started the podcast, I was terrified. (laughs) I didn't know if I could stay consistent. I didn't know if I could come up with stuff. And apparently I can. And maybe some of you are like, dude, (laughs) some of your content isn't quite up to par. It doesn't really matter to me. Done is better than perfect. And I know I serve the people I serve. And that's a big accomplishment is I get over each time I create a podcast, I get over that little wheel that spins in my head that says, no one's going to care what you said. You've already talked about this, whatever it might be. Your patterns are going to be different for you. Why it's so great for you is what matters. So if you have a little bit of like, I don't know if I can do this, consider adding in that second column, like the reason this is so great, because that's a key thing. The second insight I want to bring to you is that um, a lot of you know that my mastermind is called M Club. And M stands for a whole bunch of different words like money, mastermind, mindset. And one of my favorite words that it stands for is mastery. And I don't look at mastery like it is an arrival. I look at mastery as mastery is a process. And what it's really about oftentimes for many of us is that it is mastering our insides and who we are as business owners, as marketers, as entrepreneurs, whatever it might be for you. And mastery being a process means that a lot of us, our brains are wired for a quick fix. We want windfalls. We want lottery tickets. And yet the true reward comes from the process of mastery. And one of the things that has to be a part of that mastery is acknowledging and pulling the bar down from below your head and saying, I did that and having a place that you can do that. And some of you, maybe you don't have a mastermind like M Club to do it with, which is why I'm going to share something (laughs) to to, to add to this and to do this, the year long celebration. I'm going to share a way that you can do that. And in August, we're going to do a little 
all up level, great little series that we're going to do where you learn how to start, you know, acknowledging yourself and creating the energy of mastery. But for now, the key thing to understand is that having a business means you're going to stumble and fall and things aren't going to work and there are frustrations and you're going to be on your hands and knees quite a bit and you're going to be wondering, is this all worth it? So that means that you have to start acknowledging that what you're doing is a big deal and that most people don't take this on. And so honoring your energy and honoring what mastery means, even though I don't love the word mastery, but it it means treating yourself with respect and seeing yourself and getting over the fear that you're not enough and being the one to claim that status of being enough. And that's the process of mastery. I mean, there's other things involved, but that's a key piece of it. The third insight that I want to share with you, and this is a big one, and this is why masterminds and all of the things that I've set up with coaching is so important. And that is people who encourage you are rare. Most of us in our friendships, in our connections, in our relations, we bond in struggle. We bond in pain. And that's how, that is just how it's done. That's where like we bring out our compassion or we we really feel empathetic or we really reach out. And we have not been taught how to bond in celebration. And so to that end, it's very hard to find somebody who will acknowledge and celebrate what you have accomplished each week or what you have accomplished in a quarter. So for instance, when, when you're in something like a mastermind and you have just gotten your, you know, you've only been ever charging $75 an hour and you get your first $2,500 client, you're not going to run down the street to your neighbor and say, high five, baby, I just got a $2,500 client. Most people are going to roll their eyes at you. They're going to tell you you're greedy. They're going to tell you you shouldn't be accomplishing anything. And they're going to say you've gotten too big for your britches and they're going to send you back to your hole and try to bring you down. And that is just the way the world works. You don't want to get too big for your britches. You don't want to be like, miss all that to people. But you need a a place, you need a container for being able to celebrate and acknowledge the things you've done. You know, obviously, for one part, it's getting over your own cynicism. And for another, it's getting over the cynicism of the world most of uh, most of us who have never been taught that you can celebrate people you don't have to compare yourself your life's path is your life's path the reason you're celebrating might be entirely different from the reason i'm celebrating but to create a container of encouragers of people who can hear you say I am going to celebrate this thing. It might not seem very big, but it is very big. Or it might not seem like I can tell you all the reasons why it's not as big as I wanted it to be. But if you can have the discipline, there's that word again, to acknowledge an accomplishment, even if it's not as good as someone else's, even if it's not where you thought it might be, but really train yourself to celebrate an accomplishment and hopefully have someone be there to encourage, to high five, to listen. All of this is a game changer. And it is called the awesomeness habit. Um, those of you who are in Up Level Cafe, you know that we begin, like the first step of getting into Up Level Cafe is something we call the awesomeness inventory. I'm not going to go into the details of what that is, but people have written in our community that it is one of the most emotional. And one of the most difficult things they've done, but it is absolutely mind-blowing when they actually let themselves do it. In my own experience, my first time really getting the power of this thing I'm calling the awesomeness habit is when I had my first coach. Like I hired my first coach. It was more money than I'd ever invested in myself for anything. And I had someone who cheered me on, who listened to my accomplishments each and every week and made me, like forced me, like forced me to feed myself the dopamine I needed. And it was such a game changer for me. And so to that end, in this, in this uh, spirit of celebration, in this spirit of the awesomeness habit, 
And in the celebration of this podcast, making it a full year, I am going to do something that I've never done before. And it is, we actually, I have done it before. We did it during the quarantine. We did it for our clients as part of what I called extreme client care. And what we're going to do is the first three weeks of August, we are going to do a, an all up level, <laughs> open to everybody Sunday Summit series. And the reason this is so important, the reason this is so awesome, <laughs> the reason this is so great is that I tell people that doing the Sunday Summit as a practice is great when you do it once. And it's kind of, you start to get a little bit of sense of it when you do it twice. But by the time you've done it a third time, you begin to create that cumulative mojo that is what creates momentum where you begin to self-coach, you begin to see how much you do, you begin to stand in your power as somebody who can acknowledge yourself. And so what we're going to do is for the first three Sundays in August, there are five Sundays in August, so we have a big Sunday. <laughs> there's, a, there's a big trail of Sundays in August. And the reason this is significant is because September tends to be when all of us go back out into the world and things start feeling real again. I don't know if it's because it's the school year thing or we're just used to that. But what I want to do is create a foundation for you, help you see a foundation and set up three Sundays in August where I am going to lead a live Sunday summit. And how it's going to work is I usually start with a quick, mo you know, a meditation sort of a thing. So we get silent and still. And then I'll lead you through the Sunday Summit. And if you want to stick around, we'll do breakout sessions. And it typically goes, we can really go pretty quickly, but it goes about 30 to 40 minutes. And it's going to probably be in Eastern time. So I get that those of you who are in California might not want to wake up early on a Sunday. We're not going to record it. So you might want to be there live. And it's going to be a sequence of three Sunday Summits, the first three Sundays in August. If you want to take part of it, what you want to do is go to sundaysummitseries.com. Like I said, it's free. Put your name in and I will be sending out emails as it comes close. We'll send out the link and all that kind of stuff. And we will do this together for the first three Sundays in August. And what I want you to start experiencing is this thing called the awesomeness habit, is this thing called self-coaching so that you can begin to own your power as a business owner, as a creative, as an entrepreneur. And especially if you identify with that whole idea of being secretly sensitive, being secretly sensitive is not an excuse to not do the work. It's not an excuse to not serve the world. It's not an excuse to not have a business. What it means is that it might just be a little bit more sniggly when you have to go through some of those barriers and obstacles that come with being a little bit more tuned in. <laughs> And being a little bit more of um, somebody who senses and filters a lot of different energy and emotion. But when you create these structures, like a regular Sunday practice, like the awesomeness habit, you begin to teach yourself how to create strength and power in yourself. And I want to be someone who can lead you toward doing that. And so go to sundaysummitseries.com, just plain old sundaysummitseries.com. And you'll see the information on it and you'll be able to sign up there and we're going to get rolling on that first Sunday. I encourage you to come to all three of them. But if you can't come to all three of them, I will not hunt you down. But like I said, we're not going to be recording them or anything like that. This is strictly a live coaching experience with me. There won't be coaching on the call, by the way. I'm not going to do any Q&A, but it's going to be a time where you can be with you, work on your business, and then we'll go into breakout sessions and you will work with each other and share. And that's the reason I do that is because it's very good to get things out of your head and into out, you know, out front. <laughs> Again, here I go. Use your words. It's very good to get things out of your head and into the, the voice and get it out there. So it's circulating and somebody can be sort of your catcher's mitt, as I call it. And you can feel seen and you can start to stand in your power. So if that sounds cool to you, let's get rolling and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for being a part of the Soul Sourced podcast here. It is, like I said, my honor to have been doing this with you for a whole year.
Bye, everyone. So go home and get some rest. There's many more miles and tests. All about love. What if it comes to be all that we have left? Ooh.